You wanna see me take a trunnion out of a hard mount washer to replace the bearings? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you the two easy ways to take this out without having to touch any of the front of this machine. I wanna show you the tools I use to take a bearing housing. Now, this will take into account an 18 pound, a 20 pound, 25, 27, 30, 35, 40, 60, 80, even the great big 100 pounders. They all are pretty much set up the same way with the trunnion on the back. This is a hack for how to get that trunnion off without having to take the drum out. Because if you have to take the drum out, you gotta take the front cover, you gotta take the inner basket cover, which actually encapsulates the drum, and you gotta take that out, then you gotta pull it out, you gotta have another person hold a wrench on the inside, have someone take off the bolts on the back. Here are the tools I use to do this simple job. This is a dead blow hammer. It's plastic, it's got some kind of shot or lead in the head of it. It's good for hitting on metal stuff where you don't want to mushroom it out. You're going to need this. Needle nose vice grips, a must. And I would actually have a big set of these and a smaller set if you can find them. Half inch, grade eight, and these aren't full thread. I ordered some because my other ones went missing. But you need full thread and you'll be able to pop that trunnion off. Like I told you, that trunnion has three spots where these screw in. So you need them to be full thread. I get them from Granger, eBay, those are places you can get them. This is a three quarter DeWalt impact gun. And I go from three quarter down to three eighths. And I know you're probably wondering why. I just don't have sockets that are big as three quarter for impact and off here. If I didn't have this reducer, it would have more power. If you didn't know, with any type of impact gun, every time you add a, an extension or a reducer, you actually reduce the torque on the attachment at the end. So even with this reducer, I still have enough power to take it off. Now, I bought this 13 years ago before impacts, cordless impacts were a big thing. I mean, they weren't as good as they are today. So you could get away with a Milwaukee or a DeWalt uh, half inch or three quarter drive uh, impact gun that's battery operated be just fine. I use a map gas propane works with a torch that self lights. You don't want to be running around looking for a lighter all the time. You just pull the trigger and there you go. This here is a tool case from Horror Freight. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would I buy stuff at Horror Freight? The reason I buy tools for my laundromat at Horror Freight is because if they go missing, or if I lose them, or if they get stolen, I'm not as upset as if they're name brand stuff. Now this thing never leaves my sight. This impact in any time I'm working this laundromat never leaves my sight. Just like in a couple videos ago, I showed you a guy walking by while I was doing the door, he's already snooping around looking at stuff. You never know what you're dealing with. But this is a full set. I've got quarter inch, three eighths, half inch sockets, and socket sets, metric and SAE. I know, why would you use metric? I wouldn't use metric to save my life. I wouldn't even put metric on my worst enemy. It's me, okay? But these machines are starting to come with metric bolts, metric nuts, because of how the society is and we're making a lot of parts overseas. So even though we know metric is inferior to SAE, we still have to have the tools for it. It comes with a, an adjustable wrench, which is worthless. Any adjustable wrench from Harbor Freight is worthless. It has some uh, side cutters, needle nose, then you have a screwdriver with your bits. You have an assortment of some box end and open end wrench combinations, some impact bits up here. I mainly get it for this and these tools. I really probably won't ever need these, but it's handy to carry this around. That's why I'd get that. Another thing like before, my pouch. I've got Phillips head, I've got flathead screwdrivers, long. I get a lot of my screwdrivers from Maynard's because they actually have very good screwdrivers for what I do. LED flashlight. In this pouch, I have all my keys, my access keys for working on my laundromats. Basically your dryer doors, your computer doors, your top lids, everything that you're gonna work on. Make sure you have keys for your machines. The rest of this is star drivers, some pliers, there's some other little miscellaneous part Allen wrenches I got in here. I also have two sets of Allen wrenches in here. And that's what I carry. So 
Do yourself a favor, go get this tool kit because this is very handy. I can just snap it back together, put it back in my vehicle and drive away. Or I can leave it in the back of the laundromat, whatever you want to do. What you're going to have to do is take the belt off. And the way to take the belt off of this thing is you just get it loose on the edge here. You rotate this around. The motor with the spring-loaded motor is going to drop. Just lay the belt to your side. That's all you got to do. Next thing you're going to do is most of these are, th most of these are three-quarter bolts. Normal. Just take it off. To take off this pulley, it's going to be on there kind of tight. I use a three-jaw puller. And I put on here and then I just start turning it off. You can tap, you can tap on this if you want, but it's gonna take forever. And don't use a great big sledgehammer because this is cast. You can break cast. I would use a three-jaw puller. I would also go to Horror Freight and get that. They have a jaw puller set and it, it works perfect for this. You may have to get creative how you do this, but it works. Once you have that off, then we're talking about we got these nuts to take off. Like in the video I'm showing you. You take the map gas and you heat that outside of that locking ring up, that neoprene. Don't get crazy, don't melt it. If you melt it too much, you'll get it jammed into the threads and when you go to take the nut off, it's gonna be a pain. It's still doable, but it's gonna be a pain. So just heat it up a little, don't get crazy. Maybe one or two little rounds around it, especially as hot as this gets and you're done. Don't burn it. Two ways to pull the nuts out on a trunnion. I'm gonna show you both ways on this. I got noise from the machine next door to be running. But what, the trick number one is, take a pair of needle nose vice grips and you attach them right there on the end of the threads. Now you won't ruin the threads. Second part of the trick is, either trick one or trick two, you gotta use a map gas torch. Okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna heat up that neoprene at the end of your lock nuts. And that's how the lock nut works. That neoprene keeps it from backing out. So you, you're going to heat that plastic up. You'll see it bubble a little bit. You're not trying to smoke it. You're not trying to melt it. Just trying to warm it up. So now what you do is, the trick number one is, you take your wrench and you loosen it. Okay. and you loosen it and what's going to happen eventually it's going to get loose enough this is going to start to turn because that's actually a bolt and you can't get to the head on the other side to hold it that's why Speed Queen and Alliance Laundry recommend you take the drum out so what happens is by getting rid of that lock nut feature you're able to loosen this thing I, I usually buy new nuts when I do these. And this way you don't need any fancy impacts, any fancy tools. So we're almost to the end of it. Now we've hit the end of the vice grip, we just take it off. And if this nut starts to move, see? Now the nut's moving. Now we can't loosen it anymore. So what do you do? Well, since this is so thin, we actually stick it up in there like this. And we clamp it down. Now it won't go nowhere, right? Sorry if this is a bad angle. It's horrible lighting. But now you got two wrenches on it. Then what you're going to do is, you're going to put your impact on it, okay? And you're going to get your impact on it, and you're actually going to take the impact and you're going to pull the trigger just a little bit, short bursts, because what you're trying to do is just break it free. You don't want it to freewheel. You don't want to impact it so much that the bolt, once it loosens, starts spinning everything, because then you're never going to loosen anything. So first you break it free. Once you know you broke it free and it moves, now you're at that moving point. In most locations on here, you're gonna be able to take your impact and pull it to the side. 
So you're kind of like wedging that bolt. You're taking that bolt and you're taking what little slop it has in it and you're taking your impact and you're going to wedge it. And when you wedge it, you hit the impact button real quick and you let off, you let it stop. And you wedge it, you hit it again, you wedge it, you hit it again, you keep doing that. What you're doing is on the inside of that machine is you're actually making that bolt head rest, that hexagon head rest against the sheet metal inside and it can't turn. And so it's slowly you're pulling it off. If you notice in the video, I'm just giving them short bursts, letting it rest, making sure I'm tight and keep hitting it. If you just pull it and freewheel it, she's just gonna spin, you'll be there for the rest of your life, trust me. But that's what I'm doing. I know this is horrible, but I'm gonna show you anyway. See how far out I got it already? See it right there? I'm almost got out. The trick is just to hit short blast and make sure you got it pinched just right. Once you got it so far like that, then we can go back to our vice grips if you want to use them instead of doing it the impact way. You can just go ahead and loosen it up a little bit. I'll show you this as best I can. There we go. And then you can just take your wrench. And you can just even hand turn it. There we go. There's a washer, you pull that off. Now once we got all the nuts out, then we insert the studs. And that's a grade eight bolt. You really want the threads on the back of it longer because what this is gonna do is, if I can do this with bad lighting, is as this goes in, it's gonna push this plate out. And you have three of them, one, two, and there's a third one over here. You wanna make sure you do these evenly because if you don't, you'll get it cockeyed and that'll cause you a lot of problems. So don't do that. And you don't wanna use the impact if you can help it. So tighten them in one turn. And what you should see is this disappear in here, this shaft. And you'll actually see it pivoting as we go. Now basically we gotta, we gotta pull this off. So we gotta tighten these. And I don't have full threads, so basically what's happening, basically, basically what's happening is I have to put wedges behind them. Now if you can get full thread, that's gonna help you because you need at least about three inches of thread to pull this trunnion off. I only have about two inches. So I'm gonna move my spacer here a little bit and I'm using my wrench. Sometimes you can get flat stock of steel in that. So I'm moving to the other side here. You can hear some customers we got out here. Like I said, I always have customers so it's hard for me to film at these laundromats. Hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear. Oh, it just dropped. Oh. The other thing you'll learn too is once you have to work behind your machines, you will realize when you build your next laundromat how to design it. Now this one isn't bad, but there's a lot better ways to set them up so that when you have to do this kind of work, it's easier on you. That's why my one on my laundromat I built is so different than this because I learned all the hard lessons working on this stuff. How to build the other one. Now we just have to get this to pop in right now. a lot of fun, isn't it, guys? Yep. <clears throat> this is probably, the, there's three bad jobs on a laundromat. 
bearings, motor, and the transmission and top loader. Those are really the three worst jobs you'll ever have to do. Everything else is pretty easy. There we go. I basically just put a one inch bar in there. Square tubing I had. Oh, there you go. Did you just see that pop? That was what we wanted. There we go. Basically what's happening is the shaft is actually sliding out of the bearings. There we go. Yep, she's off. Now this is pretty heavy, so you gotta be careful you don't drop it and smash your fingers like I've done numerous times. We're gonna get some tools out of the way here. But basically what we gotta do is I'm gonna pull out my, my, my bolts here. Oh, there's stuff pooping on me. Oh, nasty. Here's what it looks like. See that? See, that's, those are the seals and that's the bearing. See all that tar and oil? That's the bearing given way. Basically these seals wore out. You can see the water here. You can see the corrosion. So I'm gonna set that down so I don't hurt myself. And I'm going to show you what the shaft looks like. This is where the little bearing sits right here. This is the sleeve. This is actually the shaft. This is actually separate. Do you see how this is all jacked up and shiny? What you want to look for is you want to look for grooves on that. And if you can drag your fingernail across and feel grooves, that means it's been wearing hard. And it has, it'll wear out your seals. Your seals ride on this sleeve. This part here, nothing touches in the center. That's just where water gets in. But all that will have to be cleaned off with emery cloth and sanded and polished a little bit. But this sleeve actually comes off and how you take it off is with heat. You heat it up and you actually slide it right off and slide the new one on. I may buy one because I don't like the fact it's grooved so bad because what's going to happen is those grooves are what wears out the, what actually wears out the seals and what causes it to leak water in here. Since I might have to wait a day for a bearing, I may see if I have a sleeve for this one. If I don't, I may order one because it'd be smart to replace it while we're at it. I mean, it's simple to do. Do I pull the drum out? Sometimes I may not need to, but usually I pull the drum out, set it up on its end. I heat it up with the same map gas I was just using. We slide it off. We heat the other one up. Then when it literally just falls right in place. Cools, we put it on. I'm gonna show you real quick. This is the spot I was in. This is the kind of areas you'll be working in. I mean, uh, it's just crazy, isn't it? Look at that room. Now I have a little chair I use, but you may not be lucky enough to get something like that or have enough space for something like that. You might even have to pull the machines completely out. Look at this, you can see how bad it is. That's your big. I don't know if I can get that angle. Got the big bearing right here. It's all jacked up. Then you got, that's, that's all grease coming out of there. That's all grease. That's, that's what it does. This one's starting to go, but it's not there yet. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Now we just gotta take that, I'll show you the bearing housing, but now I just gotta take that home. Now let's say you can't put it on an angle. There's a couple bolts, the bottom two normally is the ones I find are my biggest pain. The top ones are easy. That's when I go to the vice grip. What I, what I do here is, like in the video I'm showing you, I take the vice grip and I actually attach it to the end of the threads, okay? And I clamp it down. And then I take a crescent wrench and I'll break it free if I haven't already broken it free. If it's broken free, you probably won't even have to heat this thing up again. Now you can just turn it with a wrench because you're basically holding this bolt in place. Like in the video, once you get to the point where your vice grips are with the nut backed as far out as you can without letting go of it, 
you take your vice grip off, you readjust, and now you go up in between the space. That's why it's crucial that these needle, these are needle nose vice grips. Now you go up in that space and you clamp it down. Make sure it's good and tight. And then you, while holding that, you take the other wrench and you start turning it. So now you can use it. Uh, now you can use your socket wrench. You know your sockets. You can actually take your your three half inch drive socket and start turning it. And if you feel it slipping with the vice grip, make sure you readjust it. You don't want to rip up the teeth, the threads. You don't want to tear up the threads on that bolt. It's easy to do. You got to be careful. This is a little bit of a trick. After a while, you get the hang of it. Little dab will do you. Just keep working it free and it should pop right off. I had no problem on the one I did. So as long as you don't melt that neoprene to the point where you jam it under the threads, you'll be okay. Trust me. If, let's say you have the misfortune of a nut where you melted that neoprene to the point where it turned black and went underneath the threads and it's jammed, the only thing you're going to be able to do is there's, there's two ways to fix this. You're going to either have to take a Dremel with a cutoff wheel or you're going to have to take an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and you're going to have to cut the side of that nut to the point where you can put a screwdriver in there and pry it open and you're going to have to pry it from the end of the cut, not from the side but from the end. You pry it up, you'll actually break it free. The nut will no longer be any good but that's the only way to fix that problem. I know this because once in a blue moon, this happens to me, corrosion or whatever else. Now you have to realize these nuts and these bolts are stainless steel for a reason. So when you go to buy new ones, buy stainless steel. That's what's in the kit. They're nothing fancy, eBay, Amazon, Granger. Um, you may even find them at Home Depot, Lowe's or Maynard's. So that's what you got to do. So. In the next video, I'll be showing installing the bearings. I'll be showing cleaning that, the trunnion up. I will also show all the part numbers again so that you have them. I will even show reinstalling on here, which is a real simple process. The biggest issue is making sure you glue the end of it so it seals and making sure that uh, your sleeve's good. So on the next video, if I need to change that sleeve like I've talked about, I will do it in the next video. Super simple to do. Anybody can do it.